Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. This is a 17-foot tall statue of David, made by one of the greatest artists of the Renaissance, Michelangelo, in the early 1500s. Arguably one of the most famous sculptures in the world. And yes, for the record, David is totally nude. Oh, my. More than a million people visit the Statue of David every year. It is the most iconic piece in one of the most visited museums in Florence in Italy. And David's nudity comes with a bit of history. Soon after Michelangelo completed that masterpiece, he also made the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rome and the creation of Adam Fresco for the Sistine Chapel. Both of those works of art are also featuring nude subjects. When the Catholic Church caught wind of all the nudity, the church banned it, launching the fig leaf campaign of art censorship. Some members of the Vatican called for the figure of Adam on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. They called for it to be censored. Nude figures in Michelangelo's other fresco there, The Last Judgment, those nude figures got underpants. His Christ the Redeemer statue got a permanent bronze girdle. And his renowned statue of David got a fig leaf. So that was the 16th century. Sometime around the 20th century, David's detachable fig leaf was finally removed. According to some historians, that happened in 1912. Now, today, in the 21st century, a school board in Florida appears to be channeling that 16th century fig leaf campaign. A charter school in the state capital called Tallahassee Classical. The school began teaching Michelangelo's masterpieces to its sixth graders, meeting a school mandate to teach kids in that grade about the Renaissance. But one parent complained that the lesson, which included Michelangelo's David and the creation of Adam, along with Botticelli's Birth of Venus, that parent complained that the lesson was pornographic. <laughs> Two other parents complained that they were not notified in advance that the lesson included nudity that might upset their kids. <laughs> Seemingly inspired by Governor Ron DeSantis' parental rights slash don't say gay legislation, that Tallahassee Charter School Board passed a rule last month requiring two weeks advance notice for parents of any curriculum that is potentially controversial. The chairman of the school's board who wants Tallahassee Classical to be on the cutting edge of DeSantis's education agenda, he said parental rights are supreme and that <laughs> means protecting the interests of all parents, whether it's one, 10, 20, or 50. In this case, the interests of the three parents who spoke up about Michelangelo's scandalous masterpieces, that was apparently enough to force the school's principal out of her job. Okay, we're, we're at base camp of, of Bullcrap Mountain. You understand? I mean, I, honestly, I, everything from, uh, the, from, from their mouths, anything that comes out of a Republican legislature from this day forward, uh, it's just a, 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 it's the climb, <laughs> okay? To quote Miley Cyrus, it's the climb, everybody. It's the climb up BS uh, Mountain is what it is. And they are, uh, you know, they're going for it. They're, they're, they're... <laughs> we have serious problems. We need serious people to solve them. We don't have that. We are uh, devoid of seriousness in the uh, legislative business. It's uh, it's just really, uh, it's dank now. It's really dark. I mean, this is just so unbelievable. Now, for anybody who has seen the 17-foot marble statue of David, you know it's no big thing. <laughs> you know that, right? You've seen it. So I'm not really sure, like, uh, who would get, uh, like, emotionally aroused or physically or sexually aroused by that uh, 17 foot statue of little David, little David, um, unless it's like real art lovers or guys who are glad to see that they're not the only one. <laughs> it's time. It's a little teeny. It's Has that been David's true contribution to mankind? I suppose, you know, uh, listen, you got showers, not growers, and you got growers, not showers. I, I don't know if I could say that. We're going to get age restricted on the YouTube for simply showing a piece of Renaissance art, which dates back to the 1500s, which we all know was totally woke. 
<laughs> the Renaissance was totally woke, everybody. And then, you know, they did uh, cover him up. They, they covered up Jesus. They covered up. I mean, the Sistine Chapel is where Michelangelo did his best work. Raphael, too. Not bad. Not bad at all. But it was very, very naked. It was all really stark, raving nude uh, that, you know, went up, up there. I mean, uh, you know, and the Bible, by the way, the Bible is uh, full of porn, uh, if that's what you want to say sex is if any mention of uh, women's breasts and delighting in them and uh, you know getting a thrill from them is pornography to you don't read the bible in fact ban it because it's got a a, a million how-tos in there it's got pedophilia in there it's got splitting babies in there it's got uh, you know uh, uh, abortion in there it's got uh, you know uh, all kinds of sex and descriptions of of sex sodomy is in there where do you think uh, sod- sodomy comes from? Where do you think the word actually originated? Yes, in a town called Sodom <laughs> is where it is. You know, I mean, honestly, I don't understand, you know, uh, how people have fallen for it. I know why they're doing it. They're doing it because the polling, can you say polling anymore in America? I'm not sure. I don't know. But the polling in America clearly shows that there is a subsection of humanity that finds any mention of uh, art or breasticles or, 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 or any, uh, in school especially, uh, just off limits, just, uh, you know, not good. Uh, you got to keep it away from the children, the children. I don't know. Do you remember, we all know that I'm old enough to have Medicare. Yay, this year I got my Medicare card and I'm good. I'm good. You can call me whatever you want. You can say, uh, okay, boomer. I, I don't really give a damn because I'm good. I got more insurance than you do. Okay. I'm allowed in the free country that is America to get sick now. It's like a, it's like a, whoo, a breath of fresh air. It's like freedom, freedom at last. I can be uh, ill and actually get tended to in this here rich nation known as the United States of America. Yesterday, we celebrated the 13th anniversary of the ACA. I don't know what their objection to uh, uh, health care is, but now they're objecting to health care for children. They're objecting to health care for women. They objected to the ACA for 13 years. Repeal it, repeal it, and replace it with what? I don't know. I don't know. But somehow I feel like you're getting something I'm not getting, and that can't happen because I'm a child. Well, if you're a child, don't read the Bible because it's full of porn is what it is. And baby killing. Are you telling me God didn't kill the firstborn of Egypt? on Pesach. Are you telling me that? So honestly, I, I mean, I don't know how people have fallen for it. I really don't, uh, but they are. They're falling forward hook, line, and sinker. And it's just, it's it's bull crap. It's it's total bull crap. It's it's a total ruse. It's a total game. It's a total, they're playing with you, people. They're playing with you. And I and I don't know what, you know, like, what are we supposed to believe? The 1500s now were the mo- wo- most woke era in, 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 in all of history? Oh, not to be undone by 1912 where they peeled the fig leaf off. You do know when God made us, he made us naked. You understand that, right? When we, were, when we were actually made in the image of God, and I don't know if that makes God a man, a woman, or some combo of the two. Because if we were made in God's image and I look like this here, and you look like David over there. Over where? What are you implying? Over there, on the, on the oh, oh, 17 oh, oh. foot statue over there. Oh. If you look like David and I look like uh, Venus, who also was completely stark raving nude, what sex is God? I don't know. Personally, I don't care. It doesn't mean that I'm going to like make more money or less money. I, I, I mean, honestly, I don't understand why this picks your pocket, why this breaks your legs. I don't understand why this is a thing. I really do not get it. I don't get it. But they are going all full in on, uh, you know, and I remember, okay, like I said, I, I, I'm a boomer. But when I was in school all those years ago, you know what happened in health class? Does anybody remember? The teacher, wearing comfortable shoes no less, would pull down from the blackboard this, uh, you know, canvas thing, like a giant uh, pull-down easel sort of a thing, with a giant green penis on it. It was giant, and it was green. And it was a penis. To show me how spermatozoa is formed and how it comes out and that it can meet my little eggy weggy and make a baby all things randy at randyrhodes.com go go for launch speaking truth to power the randy rhodes show 
All right, we are so, 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 so close to meeting our spring pledge drive goal and unlocking the last $50,000 from a frontline funder who will put that $50,000 into the payroll account for Free Speech TV. So if you haven't made your gift yet, uh, today is the last day. Today is the last day of the Free Speech TV Spring Pledge Drive. Woohoo, everybody. So this is also your last chance to support independent media and your favorite shows throughout the spring, okay? It's also your last chance to help us get that $50,000 from somebody who actually you know, pledges $50,000 every single quarter if we make the goal, and I believe the goal is $250,000, right? So if the frontline funders have pitched in an extra uh, 50, and then I just got uh, a little uh, email saying that there are more frontline funders who have pulled their money together and they'll do another $10,000 if, uh, uh, and they'll do that to match whatever you do today, dollar for dollar. So if you gave $1,000, it would be $2,000, et cetera, and so forth, $5, $10. So today is triple impact. So today is the day that you could give $10, make it $20, and then get us toward the goal to unlock $50,000. So triple impact day for the last day of the Free Speech TV uh, Spring Pledge Drive. Make sure you do it by midnight tonight, okay? Just go to freespeech.org. There it is right there. Freespeech.org. You can call uh, the, the people in Denver, Colorado who are Free Speech TV uh, at 877-378-8669. Or if you love using a phone, if that's your thing, just put in the letters FSTV after you dial 44321. Text FSTV to 44321. We'll send you a secure link. And you can make a one-time donation. You can do a recurring, whatever you like. If you do recurring, just know you can cancel at any time time you don't need the federal trade commission to be on your side you can cancel at any time uh just by saying stop <laughs> so that's pretty simple but thank you very much if i forget to tell you we had a great time <laughs> during the free speech tv spring pledge drive thank you all right seth in la hey randy hi so you know we're talking about education and we're talking about what's going on so here's the deal if you were to read john dewey he will tell you that the reason for public education in the United States of America was they knew that democracy was dependent on that, that we knew that we had to have an educated electorate to sustain democracy. Yes, because we self-govern, right? Exactly. Right. So sadly, the Republicans also kind of, as smart as they are not, they're smart enough to, to get this. So they realized in order to kill democracy... We need to kill public education. That's why they love the poorly educated. Oh, I was, you know, you're, you're tracking right with me when you were writing, when you were say, talking to me uh, about uh, Dewey of the decimal fame. Uh, <laughs> you, I was writing down an educated electorate, and then I was writing the poorly educated as you made your way into that second point. Yeah, but it's even more nefarious. They, they, have, they, they don't want everybody to be too stupid to, uh, you know, make sense of their lives. They don't want everyone disoriented. The elite... And the people with the money to pay will then be able to go to private education. Public school must be trashed and it must. Right. right. And the public money that goes to public school will either be stolen or moved to private education. Exactly. And that is exactly how they destroy democracy. Yes. Because then you have this small percentage of people who are educated, but also educated kind of like in a Putin-Russia way. In a, exactly in a way like a Putin-Russia way. Exactly. Right. And then you have the rest of the masses who are now the poorly educated, who don't know any better and have no sense of history, no sense of civics, no sense of democracy, no sense of government. So then these people get easily swayed. It's like, well, it's like a scammer coming on your telephone. It's like, oh, okay, you know, I'll just follow you. I'll just follow you because I don't know any better. And this is what they're counting on. Because really, in public education, I've been in public education my entire life. I'm retired now. But everybody, our doors are open to everybody. Right. And everybody is welcome. And the more that everybody is in, the better our society is. When I, back in the 90s, my elementary school, was, we were, aren't thematically, but we were a social justice school. And I remember the district back then was like, what the heck is that? Um, and so we actually included 
gay and lesbian pride and awareness as you celebrate Black History Month and Women's History Month. You can't leave anybody out. And here's the thing that I learned, and this was in a very heavy Latino, Catholic, uh, um, low-poverty neighborhood. In working with parents, when I help them to understand, your kid doesn't have to be gay to be gay-bashed. Your, someone just has to think your kid is gay, and then your kid is victim to being gay-bashed. And when I was having those conversations with parents, that's when I saw hearts and eyes opening up because it kind of made it personal and it took it out of this other realm that people tend to kind of box this whole topic. Yes, the, ne- the, the nebulous region which, of the netherworld that will never happen to me. Exactly. And so, you know, so that's the whole thing, Randy. This is why Trump loves the poorly educated. This is why they're trying to destroy public education because it's nipping democracy at the bud. Totally. I mean, the inequality that we have in this country, uh, you know, by virtue of, uh, you know, the way that we redistrict ourselves, the way that we pay ourselves, the way that people have this zero sum game in mind when it comes to wages or when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, 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 access to opportunity. Uh, they want to do it with education, too. They want to do Absolutely. it right there. And and that is the, the, the fund. This is such a bad faith, uh, entry level, poorly educated argument that it could only come from them. Exactly. Exactly. And it's just like like everything that they're focusing on, when, like, and you've mentioned this a lot, with all the real issues we have in our world, in our country, yes, hunger, inequality, education, they're focusing on, on drag queens, they're focusing on, this is why they're banning books. They don't want the kids to know. This is why Ron DeSantis, Greg Abbott, they're rewriting history. It, it, it's, it's, the, it, it's like, and it's their final gasp for air, because, Randy, I believe they know, like Lindsey Graham, they're all going down. And um, this, is, this is like their last, their last power play, because they are dying off. But here's the thing that worries me. Okay, when you talk about redistricting, you know, think back, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, maybe 12, like North Carolina was leaning blue, right? It yeah. was becoming purple. Mm-hmm. And then look what they did with their redistricting. Mm-hmm. Georgia, now... So now kind of in, it forces it red. Georgia, turning blue, and now they're trying to make these laws where they can fire any um, any prosecutor if they don't like who they're prosecuting. Florida, too. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like these states that are pushing purple, that are moving blue, like they still have that stronghold to grab them by David's balls there and um, <laughs> and 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 and. and Keep the flow from happening. But, Randy, it's not going to work. There's there's just too many of us. No, it isn't going to work. People are curious. People are hungry for information. People need to orient themselves in the world that they toil and live. So, yeah, I mean, but just think about it this way. What was the, what was the, the word about slaves and books? The word about slaves and books? Yeah. Were they allowed to have books? No. 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 And that's it. That's what it's about. It's about enslaving all of us. All of us. And what's the first thing they take away? Reading. Call in, connect. Speak to Randy. Call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Spread the word far and wide. Spread the word far and wide. Free Speech TV. Free Speech TV is having the final day of the spring. Free Speech TV pledge drive. It's the last day. Triple the impact today. Your donation today to Free Speech TV match dollar for dollar, okay? Up to $10,000. Then there's a $50,000 payday waiting for us at the end of the rainbow if we reach our goal, if we reach our goal today. Uh, And uh, also, uh, you know, um, so 50, 10, and then your money. (laughs) So that's like triple. So please do it. 877-378-8669, 877-378-8669, and I'll leave you alone, okay? I'll leave you alone till next hour. Freespeech.org, that's the uh, website, and you, of course, could text FSTV to 44321. We'll send you a link. It's secure. Just uh, feel happy and uh, know that you are supporting independent television. All right, David in uh, North Miami Beach. Randy, your majesty. Yes, my supplicant. Yes. Um, the quickest way to get the Bible banned is to merely describe it. Yes. That it has a parable 
about a rich person being punished from stealing from a poor person, <laughs> and that the punchline is a miscarriage by Bathsheba of David's uh, first child by her. Did she use no one knows the, stone? The, <laughs> right, uh, exactly, because no one remembers the parable of Nathan. Who knows the prophet Nathan? Nobody, unless your name is David. We take these things personally. <laughs> So you so you describe it, but the parts they know the least. Why can't they? Uh, I, I mean, know why. Why if they're not going to really read deeply? Okay, why can't right. they just get Sermon on the Mount, you know, or Corinthians, and just uh, go from go from there? I mean that that's good. or we give that's them the Jefferson Bible, right, where all the magic is taken out. <laughs> yes, but we have to thank uh, Tom Hanks and his movie Inferno for his description of the fig leaves and. You know, getting rid of all the genitalia. So ge- uh, in, genitals in, are a very big thing in the Bible. I must, uh, I must tell huge. you, breasts are gigantic too. It's a big thing. It's a big subject. Abortion is also, uh, you know, discussed many ways. Many ways. You can drink the bitter water. You can kick a woman in the stomach. And if all else fails, and she's uh, pregnant with someone else's, uh, you know, uh, child, not your uh, child, you know, you could just uh, kill her. Which is what they're doing. I, this is what they're doing. This is why I say, why in the 21st century are we so hyper against providing health care to this group and that group? And that's why it's base camp of, you know, uh, uh, of David's, uh, you know, nutty little, you know, thing. That's all they got. That's what they got. This is what they're offering uh, you. Well, we are. We remain the breast and brightest, as you used to say. The Correct. breast and brightest. That's us. Uh, Bob in Connecticut. Hello. Hello, Bob. Uh, this is Bob from Connecticut. As a retired museum curator, <gasps> if this statue were in America, what I would do is have a, a contest with uh, some uh, different uh, de- dress designers making little uh, skirts for them, and one for each season, one for winter, <laughs> a cute one wrapping around, covering up as privates. Wouldn't that be fun? It could be a fundraiser in America. But I don't think they do it in Italy. So the red carpet, the red carpet for uh, the Renaissance era art. Yeah, that would be good. But if you are a museum curator, when I say to you, Pan and the Goat, do you know what statue I'm talking about? Do you know? Again, I can't hear you. Do you know about Pan, the statue of Pan and the Goat? C A E N. P A N. Pan. No. Google it, and then have, come up with an outfit for that. Not safe for work. Yeah, yeah well, definitely not safe for work. Like a little mini tennis skirt around them, and change it during the seasons and have dress designers make it, and they could have fundraiser. Like the red carpet for the Renaissance era is what I'm saying, is uh, what we ought to do. We ought to have like a a Met Museum. Uh, you know the Met Museum, uh, you know the, 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 the weird outfits that you see at the Met? A lot of people don't understand what that is uh, for. So at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, they have a costume design section. And that Met Gala is to uh, fundraise for the costume museum. And that's why people wear odd costumey types of, uh, you know, uh, over the top, uh, you know, regalia, right? Because it's a museum, an art museum, costume designing fundraiser, the Met Gala is, right? So why don't we do Renaissance as the theme? <laughs> and then people can come stark raving nude. And E and YouTube and ABC will not be able to air it because it's inappropriate for the children. Apparently, uh, the Renaissance was too woke for the children. I mean, this is just like really sad. I have to tell you. And, and, and the idea, you know, yesterday, this is, this is why we were hyper alert to the story in the first place. Because this, this school, by the way, just a little background on this school. This school is in beautiful Tallahassee, Florida. Yeah. And this school is part of the Hillsdale College conservative education system. A system of private conservative education that is supposed to turn out 
conservative lawyers. That's what Hillsdale College, uh, that's why you always heard, uh, you know, Mark Levin. There, I said it. Him, that guy, that creepy, uh, you know, a sh- shrill, you think I'm a shrill shrew. <gasps> At least I'm a girl. He's, he's a shrill shrew and he's a, he's a boy, so he says. But that was what he was, uh, you know, uh, uh, pimping. Every single break, it was always Hillsdale College, give to Hillsdale College, and he was going to appear at Hillsdale College, and he was going to sell books for Hillsdale College, and Hillsdale's got books for sale, because Hillsdale, the, the grift was, Hill, like, he would write a book, okay, a garbagey book about, uh, you know, twisted history, he would twist it the way he wanted it to be, and he would sell this book. Well, the book didn't sell, right? But he needed to say it was a New York Times bestseller, this is a big scam in the book world, okay? And so Hillsdale... And Heritage Foundation and all these people that would give you a free book for joining, a free book as a premium for your generous donation. The book that they would give you would be the book they bought in bulk from today's, uh, you know, uh, 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 conservative author of uh, Du Jour or Du She, whatever you want to say. And so they would buy 35,000 copies of the book. Well, in order to be a New York Times bestseller, you have to sell 25,000 copies of a book. And that gets you on the New York Times bestseller list. Most people don't know that. They think it's like music. Well, in the music business, you have to sell a million freaking albums. One million. In book world, you only have to sell 25,000 copies. So A, what does that tell you about people's preference for music over books, which is sad in and of itself. As a reader, I tell you this, but... They would buy the 25,000 books, okay? And that's how they would get on the New York Times bestseller list. So it was this circular sort of, um, you know, uh, way of making money for everybody but you. Right? Everybody but you. Well, Hillsdale got so big for its britches that it decided, hey, let's spawn some junior Hillsdales. And so they did. They spawned. And this school in Tallahassee is a charter school. It is a Hillsdale College supported charter school. And its role is to suck the public school money out of the public school. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. It is. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Two years ago, more than 1,600 books were banned in the United States of America. Here are three of the key books that the right-wingers have been going after. Kyle Leto saying he's the kite runner about the dangerous fanaticism, authoritarianism, an abuse of the Taliban, a right-wing religious fundamentalist movement all about censorship and repressing women's control over their own bodies and their own fertility. I love that The book. Handmaid's Tale, Margaret Atwood's extraordinary dystopian novel about a right-wing misogynist movement which uses high technology and depraved religious ideology to control not only the minds of their followers, but the, <clears throat> but the private and public lives and the fertility of women. I love that And of book. course, George Orwell's 1984, oh. because they have no sense of irony. <laughs> They're always trying to censor this one. Mr. Chairman, the gentleman's we, time's expired. We, we need more politicians reading books gentleman's in America time. and fewer politicians trying to censor books in mm-hmm. America. Truly that. I, I, those are three of my favorite books. A Kite Runner I read when I lived in Costa Rica. I think I read it in like a, a day. 1984 you could totally read in a day. It's unbelievably good. It's a page turner. It is. It is everybody. And Margaret Atwood, I mean, okay, I get most people, uh, you know, uh, binged it on Hulu, but I mean, it's just like the the best book ever about, uh, you know, a a dystopian future that uh, prohibits women from uh, controlling their own bodies. Just saying. Just saying. Jamie nailed it. They are immune to irony. They are. 1984. 1984. (laughs) Which, by the way, you know, is, is, is one of the most quotable books today because of what we're going through today. And, and the quote that, that is rattling around my head lately, because, I mean, there's so many, like, uh, you know, uh, freedom of slavery, uh, you know, war is peace, uh, you know, I, I came to love Big Brother, you know, two and two is five. There's so much in there that's quotable. But the quote that's sticking with me lately from that, uh, you know, unbelievably great read that is George Orwell's 1984, is that he who controls the present 
controls the past. And whoever controls the past controls the future. Take a minute. Have another hit if you need to. Let that just, uh, you know, put it down in your ideas book. Oh, yeah, I have one. But, uh, you know, usually when I look at it the next day, I'm like, what? And then I have another book, you know, like my Moleskine that I actually use when I have these uh, good thoughts, great thoughts, uh, you know, lucid thoughts, you know, sober thoughts. I, I use, and then the next morning when I wake up and see what uh, came to me in the middle of the night or what came to me right before I fell asleep, I'm like, oh, half my day's done. So there's a difference. <laughs> Just giving a little handy, uh, you know, uh, 911, just a, just a little, uh, you know, shout out to uh, people who think that those ideas are going to be worth anything tomorrow uh, versus those of us who do have ideas that are worth something tomorrow. But anyway, I, I mean, honestly, this book banning thing, th those were three of my favorite, favorite, favorite books, three of them right there in that uh, less than one minute pass about which, which books they're trying to get rid of. And, and he, you know, uh, the, the idea that we're, that, that we're literally thinking about The Handmaid's Tale as women now, because the, the GOP, the right wing, the maggots, are so busy, and they've been busy since the Tea Party fanatics, okay, trying to ban access to health care for everybody, okay? We're going to have death panels. This, the, the elderly were going to be, uh, you know, killed. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, nobody saw the future. Because if they did it, they knew that the future would be called COVID, not the ACA. COVID was a death panel for the elderly, right? And now they're banning, you know, uh, abortion. Uh, yesterday in Wyoming, uh, one of the doctors who toils, uh, you know, at the solo, the only clinic still operating in Wyoming, the only clinic, there's one, and, of course, they have to go after that one. That would be bad if there was one place where women had to drive all the way across Wyoming to get to. That place needed to be shut down. And so yesterday in Wyoming, not only did uh, the doctor who uh, was uh, working as the OBGYN in that clinic win a stay of uh, the abortion ban going into effect in Wyoming, she actually pre pre prevailed. And the reason why she prevailed has something to do with the Wyoming Constitution. <gasps> really? Yes, really. The Wyoming Constitution guarantees to each adult in Wyoming, in the state constitution, the right for that adult to choose their own health care. To choose their own health care. So when she won yesterday based on the Constitution of Wyoming, these freaks on the right actually argued, is reproductive health care actually health care? <laughs> this is what they're going to argue, that reproductive health care, women's health care, sorry, we are the life givers, women's health care is not health care. They're going to actually argue this. So anyway, there was a stay. But while the stay was being granted, a 22-year-old freak of nature actually lit a, a she, she, she poured a pitcher of gasoline into a, well, uh, a wellness clinic that services transgendered kids, uh, that services transgendered adults, that services uh, uh, women who need birth control, et cetera. So this, this, this crazy miscreant 22-year-old kid uh, went, and I shouldn't say she's a kid, she's 22, uh, went and, and poured gasoline into this Wellspring Clinic in Casper, Wyoming, lit a match, and set the freaking place on fire. She's now looking at, uh, you know, five to, to life behind bars. But what is it with the right wing in healthcare? What is it with, uh, you know, uh, comparing healthcare to things like tattoos? Okay. For those of you who are having a hard time with it, a tattoo is not health care. Okay. All right, then. When I had my ears pierced, that was not health care. So I, I, I don't know why people have such a difficult time. I guess it's because they have no uh, personal interaction or no personal understanding of uh, somebody else's life that looks a little different than theirs. And so therefore, because there's a lack of understanding and uh, just pure ignorance in that portion of the brain that's supposed to be able to imagine you in somebody else's shoes, and maybe they are Jimmy Choo's, Okay, but because you lack the imagination to put yourself in somebody else's shoes, 
you uh, operate from this uh, dark hole in your brain known as the ignorance that is inside your head, and you decide that's bad. That's bad. And you know, uh, it's just because you have no uh, you know, uh, interaction with it, and you fear what you don't know. And the amount of stuff that people don't know is growing exponentially with each book ban. With each one. Now, I, I, I want to show you uh, so, uh, another floor speech that was uh, pretty illustrative of what's going on. Jim McGovern, he was able to show you what these books have in common. As the teacher in Texas who was told that they have to teach, quote, the opposite perspective on the, holo- on the Holocaust. As the teacher in Florida who was fired for exposing a book banning spree at the hands of Ron DeSantis that would make the Chinese Communist Party blush. Now, I have a few books uh, that Republicans want to ban. I, uh, there's too many to go through now, but let me, let me recite a few. The Life of Rosa Parks. You know, who is Sojourner Truth? The, the biography of Nelson Mandela. And the story of Harvey Milk. Now, do you notice any pattern here? They want to ban books about black and brown people, and they want to ban books about LGBTQ I plus people. Mm. It is sick. It is hateful. What's wrong with them, Mr. Speaker? If you don't like a book, don't let your kid read it. But you don't get to tell the rest of us parents what our kids should be allowed to read. Talk to your kids' teachers. Run for school board. But don't take away money from schools that fall down on the wrong side of the MAGA culture wars. Dude, that, that, that is the common threat, okay? It is. It really is. Bullseye. It's, all right. All right. Um, Elaine in Florida. Hi. Hey. I have a question for you. All right. Okay. I want to know what your opinion is about these guys dressing up like RuPaul and uh, entertaining. I find it entertaining. I don't see anything wrong with it. What is wrong with it? Nothing. Okay. So why does the government step in and say nobody can do it? Because they, they, they literally are having a bad faith argument with the American people because they have nothing else to offer them. Well, you know what really upsets me is you see this commercial, two gay men kissing, and they're talking about AIDS medication. What message is that sending to our kids? That you can be healthy <laughs> and gay all at the that same time. Really? I don't feel that way. Well, I don't care what you feel. It's just a fact of life that in the 80s, people were dying, and now they're not from a virus. It happens. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey! It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. So what do you expect to happen this weekend with the former president? I think he's going to be on attack. I've talked to the source familiar with the president, former president's plans here when he heads to Waco, Texas for Waco. that first kind of official rally of the 2024 campaign. Mm. I'm told that he will really go after or is expected to the Justice Department and the person you just mentioned, Savannah, the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis. You know, DeSantis has uh, alluded to what he sees as issues with, for example, some of the weaponization of the Justice Department. That is a fairly common Republican line on that front. But you're also seeing DeSantis try to put some space between himself and Donald Trump. He's giving this interview now to Pierce Morgan. Mm -hmm. It was teased in the New York Post and elsewhere. He's laying out the contrast here and giving a little bit of a subtle dig, saying the way we run the government, I think, is no daily drama. Focus on the big picture and put points on the board. We've been hearing a lot about DeSantis on the former president's uh, online platform, Truth Social. I bet we see it in person over the weekend, Savannah. More of that in Waco. Waco. Waco, we have, we have a past president of the United States of America who this particular weekend, tomorrow, is going to get together with his messianic, gun-hoarding, child-molesting, violent extremist cult members uh, who will report to his shrine of lies, genuflect at his knee, and drink Kool-Aid if asked. What kind of a psycho thing is this? 
So, uh, you know, Mary Trump wrote a little article about how, you know, this is obviously uh, uh, meant to uh, trigger the chaotic, violent ones, uh, to make them, uh, you know, like report for duty, sir, and to have them take, uh, you know, an oath of, uh, of mayhem and violence and, uh, you know, ple- pledge to him that they will die for him, literally that they will literally die for him, that they will go in there, they will do this bad thing, they will attack the district attorney in New York, they will attack Jack Smith in Washington, they will attack Fonnie Willis in uh, Fulton County, they will attack anybody and everybody that ever, ever poses a, tr- a, a threat to their dear leader. I mean, this is sick, this is sad, but that's why Waco, on the 30th anniversary of the apocalypse that was Waco, Uh, that was entered into by a messianic pedophile, gun-hoarding, child-molesting, violent extremist who was having himself a little uh, cult. Honestly, so so Mary said, hey, listen, there is a way to uh, have him show up at the Waco airfield and have nobody be there. And the way that you do, I did it. I did it. I just want you to know I did it. But I did it under another name, not because I'm a chicken crap. I mean, I'll do it right now under my, my, my air name. I'll do it under my legal name. I'll do it under my maiden name. I don't care. Pick a name. I'll do it. But uh, I, I, so what you need to do is go to events, events dot com. Yes, it's long and it's tedious and it's lengthy. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, Mr. Little Fingers doesn't think typing is, uh, you know, like a heavy lift. So he put a lot of letters in there for you to get to that site. But it's events.donaldjtrump.com, right? And if you go there, you can um, reserve their free because, like, who would really go pay for him? Oh, that's right, MAGA. Uh, But (laughs) you can get free tickets. You can actually set them aside for yourself to be picked up, I guess, at will call at the airfield in Waco uh, on the 30th anniversary of an apocalyptic event that will forever be known in American history as Waco, (laughs) okay, Um, and thereby sucking up all the tickets that are available, maybe forcing him to have to go to an empty rally. So I thought, you know, I don't know who's going to show up to this thing anyway. Most of his, uh, you know, most of his supporters are in jail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the really violent ones are either in jail or on probation. And the other ones are like, hey, man, he didn't get our back. Screw him. I'm not going to go die for this guy. This guy uh, totally abandoned us, which is true. So I'm not sure how many, how many he has. Uh, I could show you how many he has here. And you would think here in, in West Palm, in Palm Beach, where he uh, actually, uh, you know, runs his resort slash home, <laughs> the, the site of the last crime, which was <laughs> obstruction of justice. And I don't know, maybe it was a national security risk. I, I have no earthly idea like what was in those documents, nor does anybody except for the prosecutors in this uh, matter and the lawyers that were representing Donald J. Trump in this matter, like Evan Corcoran and uh, Christina Bopp. Okay, these are the people that know what the documents were. We don't know what the documents were. We just know that some of them had cover sheets that said, uh, you know, uh, no foreign eyes. Others of them said classified. Others of them said secret. Others of them said top secret. Right. Others of them were for the president's eyes only. And he had those. He had those in Magaloco. He, he was keeping them there and lying about it and lying and, and, and literally shape-shifting his lies. First, he said he didn't have anything that was responsive uh, to the DOJ's request for documents. Then, after he got a subpoena, he said that he had turned everything he did have over to them and that they did a diligent search of the premises. <laughs> His lawyer, Evan Cohn, actually wrote that down and had Christina Bopp sign it. So the lie is over Christina Bopp's signature. But Evan Corcoran is also on a phone call with Donald Trump the day that the surveillance tapes from uh, Magaloco, because it's a freaking resort. So it's got surveillance tapes. Uh, you know, it's got surveillance cameras all around and about it. And they subpoenaed them because, uh, you know, some people were saying that boxes were being moved. And it, But anyway, uh, so you have these two lawyers that uh, lied to the court, apparently, and said, no, we did a diligent search and there are no documents responsive to the subpoena to be had. And then he lied and said, they're mine. <laughs> so, 
you know, I mean, so there was like countless, countless lies. Now, you know, you're allowed to lie in America. Hate to tell you, but you are. But you're not allowed to lie to the Department of Justice. You're not allowed to submit a sworn document, okay, and lie in a sworn document because you swore under penalty of perjury, number one. And number two, it's the DOJ. You can't lie to DOJ, okay? So there's that. And then all the different ever-changing lies sort of let you know that there was obstruction in the investigation, that he was obstructing a legal and, uh, you know, uh, and obviously a judge thought that there was probable cause that he did have documents and that he was obstructing the return of those documents because a judge issued a warrant to go and search a past president's resort slash residence, Magaloco. So today, Evan Cohen had to go testify in D.C. in front of yet another grand jury, okay, the one that Jack Smith convened to hear whether or not Donald Trump obstructed and suborned perjury from Evan Co- uh, Corcoran, his lawyer. And Christina Bopp, also his lawyer. Now, she was smart enough to put a caveat in there because she did not do the diligent search that Evan Corcoran said he did. So when she signed the document saying a diligent search did occur, she actually said, to the best of my knowledge. So Evan Corcoran is the guy who crafted that document. And Evan Corcoran apparently was taping, audio taping, Donald Trump on the phone when Donald Trump called him the day that Donald Trump got wind of the fact that there was going to be a search of Magaloco. Now, I don't know how many lawyers actually record their clients because they uh, need proof that, you know, if, if ever they, they get hauled into court because their client is obstructing justice with the Department of Justice, that they would have evidence that they didn't play. <laughs> Uh, but apparently Evan Corcoran did that. And so there are documents, there's work product. There are documents, there's work product, there's all kinds of stuff that he has, and there's audio tapes of a phone call. And all of that is attorney-client privileged, but wasn't I the one that told you about the crime fraud exception? And years ago, when this whole thing first started, I told you... Donald Trump will not be protected by executive privilege. Donald Trump will not be protected by attorney-client privilege. If Donald Trump was using those privileges in the commission of a crime or a fraud. Well, it's, I mean, from the minute his, you know, his, uh, you know, gnarly toes hit the ground every day, he's committing fraud just by being him. So, of course, there was a crime-fraud exception that was uh, invoked. And the judge in the case, Beryl Howard, uh, ruled that, uh, yeah, they were trying to uh, commit a crime. And so she pierced the privilege. Pierced it. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. In fact, right now, one minute ago, Evan Corcoran, that attorney, was spotted walking into a federal courthouse here in Washington, D.C. Oh. Um, so we things are <laughs> moving. Things are moving. They are moving. OK, so I have to tell you this. Uh, I- I'm sure you know that uh, Donald Trump is like, uh, you know, uh, posting. I don't know what to call it on his uh, platform. And he's posting really violent imagery. He's saying things like uh, Alvin Bragg is a George Soros backed animal animal calling uh alvin bragg a racist and getting his violent uh, sycophants all worked up so just now uh new york city has reported that alvin bragg's office received a package of some suspicious white powder yeah suspicious white powder with a little uh, note attached to it that said i'll kill you Now, they are saying that the white powder was harmless. It was non-hazardous material. But the I'll kill you, what is that? Uh, So he's going to say, what, a New York tourist sent it? What, it was a little postcard? A little tourist postcard purchased in New York that, of course, says, I'll kill you, Alvin Bragg. I'll kill you. We don't even make those, okay? The postcards we have in New York say, I love New York. That's what we have. Some of them have the Statue of Liberty on it, and others have the Empire State Building, okay? This is what we have. We don't have, I'll kill you, postcards for tourists. So let's not uh, play the tourists. They were just tourist games again. Postcards from the Edge game, yes. Some drug-addled, lunatic, fringy person decided that's how he was going to spend his day. 
but he is literally blaring, blaring these air horns of, of, of hatred out there to anybody who is susceptible to it. And he's begging them, begging them to do violence, period. I mean, this is what he wants. He wants chaos, and he wants chaos created through violent means. And that is just unbelievable that we have, you know, some sort of a, a, a I don't want to say dictator without, uh, you know, leaving off the tater, but that's what we have as a past president of the United States who is facing investigations in just about every major city along the eastern seaboard. Grand juries have been convened all up and down the eastern seaboard to try and hold this fraud, this man, this violent insurrectionist, loving, uh, uh, crazy man, uh, accountable for the, the violence he's already wrought. Uh, the, now, you know what's really interesting, though, about the documents case? That's what Evan Corcoran is going to testify about, the documents at Magalak Loco. Like I just told you, okay, he, he was the lawyer, the, the principal lawyer for Donald Trump when Donald Trump was being asked by DOJ to turn over these documents and he was lying and lying some more and then changing the lie and shifting the lie. And You remember when John Kerry once lied about a piece of legislation he was for until he was against it? Do you remember that? I was for the $87 billion before I was against the $87 billion. It was because an appropriations bill actually changed where the money would go. And like a normal person, you would change your support or withhold your support for something that changed that didn't uh, actually say what you, th- what you wanted it to say. But that was like a whole ad campaign of nothing but flip-flops on the TV, right? Flip-flop and fishes out of tanks and, you know, dying goldfishes flipping and flopping and, you know, uh, a flipper. They actually had dolphins flipping and flopping and oh, they call him Flipper and they set it to music and they did all this. And this is before the meme, everybody. This was before the GIF. This was b- b- before deep fakes. And uh, they did... And now you got this guy who changes his story like as, as, as often as you change your panties and uh, it's all okay. It's not obstruction. It's fine. It's not a thing. We'll do violence for him. I mean, I, I, I honestly, the, 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 the legacy of rage continues, continues. So that's why Evan Corcoran was uh, testifying today in that grand jury. The other grand jury, is he arrested yet? Was he indicted yet? Anybody? Anybody? No! What I say at the beginning of the week, see you next Tuesday, didn't I? If anything is going to happen, it will not happen until next week. That is a fact. And anybody that wanted to know it could know it last week. You could know it last weekend. Because by the time I got here on Monday, I went, uh, what is this garbage? This is, this is bull crap. And we'll see tomorrow that nothing's going to happen. And then Tuesday came and nothing happened. And then Wednesday came and nothing happened. And then Thursday came and they said, oh, the grand jury was supposed to meet today. And then they didn't meet. Oh, no, they did meet. But they weren't talking about Donald Trump. They were hearing one of the myriad of things that grand juries who sit for months and handle complex cases uh, and hear, handle many cases at one time were hearing something that was Related not to Donald Trump on Thursday. Today they don't meet. And maybe they'll meet on Monday. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and it was so knowable. And they just decided in the mainstream media, they didn't really uh, have anything else in the hopper. They didn't want to cover the book bans. They didn't want to cover the trans stuff. They didn't want to cover these hate bills that are making their way through various state legislatures. They didn't want to cover, uh, you know, uh, uh, Megan Hunt or Michaela Kavanaugh in Nebraska who were waging valiant fights. Like, uh, there, there are some state legislators that actually distinguish themselves on being on the right, by being on the right side of history. And, uh, you know, like Valerie McMorrow in Michigan, okay? She's one of those. Uh, another one is this woman, Michaela Kavanaugh, who obviously, obviously, was not going to legislate hate and really, really wanted to filibuster this disgusting, hateful bill that would withhold health care yet again. It's a recurring theme, everybody. That would withhold health care from children, from children. And idiots in this country actually think, they actually do, that uh, a, a doctor or a child will have their genitalia cut or cut off, depending on their, their, their gender identity, 
before they're 19 years old. Uh, that doesn't happen. That is not a thing. That is not real. So if that's what you were obsessing over, the genital mutilation of children, just know that doesn't happen. It's not a real thing. There's a lot of stuff that the Republicans talk about that is not a thing. That's not real. And that's one of them. The other one is that you would give a kid who's prepubescent estrogen and or testosterone, depending on, uh, you know, the gender identity of that child. That also is not a thing that does not happen. The only thing that might happen after a good solid year or two of psychotherapy and psychiatry and uh, counseling and, uh, you know, your parents being present for the whole year or two of these discussions about how you've known since you're four years old your gender identity and your gender identity isn't what, when you look down, you see. Okay, that does happen in nature. And the only treatment that might, might be offered is a puberty blocker to stop puberty from progressing so that a, a prepubescent adolescent has time to think, has time to deal, has time to cope, has time to discuss, has time to work it through before anything, anything else is offered, okay? And then once those puberty blo- blockers are stopped, puberty ensues yet again. That's what people don't know and they need to know about that. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. So now I have Donna Summer playing in my head. Why? Why? Why would I have Donna? Because this is your last chance. Your last chance for romance. This is it. This is the end. This is the last time I will ask. But I am asking. So thank you very much for giving. Uh, This is the final, final pledge drive pitch from me for the Free Speech TV Spring Pledge Drive. As you know, today, every single donation that you make will be matched dollar for dollar up to 10,000 extra dollars. Extra, okay? Because the match money, uh, you know, is uh, daily now, but we run out. So there's 10,000 more dollars on the table now to match your donations up to $10,000, right? And then, and then, if we make the pledge drive goal of $250,000, and we only get two weeks to do it now, so we don't wear you down or wear you out or wear me out or whatever, uh, then we get to unlock yet another tranche of dollars, cash, $50,000, which was pledged at the beginning of the pledge drive. Should we make the goal, uh, somebody out there will pony up another $50,000 to keep this 25-year experiment of independent free speech TV media uh, going. That's what it takes. It takes people with little money. It takes people with medium money. And it takes people with big, big money. And we have all of that as, uh, you know, lovely uh, audience members and loyalists who believe in what we're doing here at Free Speech TV. And, of course, you know, today, this week was a great week to see the difference. This was a great week to do compare and contrast because as of last Saturday, every single mainstream media channel, every single one from the network proper to the cable newsers, all covered Donald Trump being arrested ad nauseum. Every segment, every minute of every broadcast, every day. It led all the the top of the hours for days, for days. And you know, they're not smarter or stupider than we are. And I knew that this was a ruse. I knew he was a liar. I knew he was lying. So if you support independent media, uh, please do it today. Today would be a great day to just dial up 877-378-8669 and make a pledge. You could do a recurring if you are so inclined, or you could do a one-time. It's up to you. Freespeech.org will get you where you need to go to. And text messaging works for us. Free Speech TV's text is 44321. You just put in the letters FSTV and send it to 44321. 
via text and we will text you back a secure link. And on that link, you can uh, make a donation. You could do a recurring or not. If you do recurring, just know all you got to do is say stop and it will stop. It's just very, very simple and basic and beautiful. So thank you very much for your patience this uh, past two weeks. Uh, and thank you for tuning into Dish 9415 or Direct 348 or watching us on your Roku stick or on your Apple TV or on your Sling TV uh, because that is uh, how we survive with you. All right, Brother David. Last chance, last chance. For romance. Love. Yes, Absolutely. it's my last chance for romance <laughs> tonight. Oh, oh, I need. I'm going to get flagged. Copyright. I'm going to get flagged. Copyright infringement. Right. Copyright infringement. Easy. But um, I butchered it so bad that maybe it'll miss, you know? It, it, well, you know, yeah. I, I, it's my fault I cued it. Um, <laughs> no, I did. So, here we go. Um, you know, in 1993, the light partner and I, on our honeymoon, went to the March on Washington and then the opening of the Holocaust Museum. And on that Sunday, I was leading the Radical Ferry contingent, but I hung back because <laughs> all my ACT UP friends were coming. And there were a whole bunch of right-wingers. And you know how parades are, you know, the, the float in front of you has to stop because the band hasn't gone, et cetera. And they started going, shame, shame, shame. And like a ripple through the entire, almost the entire march. Way go, way go, way wow. until that's all you could hear. Wow. So I find it unintentionally ironic that that's where it has gone for its soon, wouldn't, not last hurrah, but its diminishing returns hurrah. Hey, honey, it is a legacy of rage. That's all it's going to be remembered as. That's all it will ever be noted as. That's all it will ever, history will record it. We won't be able to read it, but that's what it will say. It was a legacy of rage, a of legacy rage. of hatred and bigotry and misogyny and anti-Semitism and, uh, you know, just all of it, all of it. And that there were 30% of the people in the United States who liked it. Who bought it, you bet. Yep. Um, on the other subject, the fascists frantically foraging for filth um, <laughs> front. Um, Michelangelo's David uh, read as Alexei Navalny. Really? <laughs> Michelangelo's David? Well, we know why they didn't go after Venus de Milo, because she has no arms and she can't defend herself or pleasure herself. And she's what's standing next? on a shell. <laughs> and she's standing on a shelf. What's next? Is the Mona Lisa's inscrutable smile going to be considered a come hither, come on look? <laughs> I, it, 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 they, they're, they're scambling uh, worse than eggs at Jane Denny's. It's just uh, you know, well, you know, f sad. freaking fear, really, just f it, because this is all it's based in. This is what it's about. Bingo. This is who they are. This is what they do. This is what they sell. They peddle. They toil. They, they everything's about fear and ignorance. Every single thing. Every single thing. It started with the first caller today who understood that this is why they love the poorly educated okay Absolutely. because they when when you have a big black hole in your brain where information or art or reading or or or, or you know music should be when you have right. a big black hole there they can fill it with fear and rage and hate and bigotry and misogyny and and people are you know open to have that part of their brain filled because it's a just a giant uh, vacuum you know it's there's nothing there False evidence appearing real. Which is why they teach you this, which is why they fill you with art, which is why they fill you with music, which is why they fill you with books and reading and lessons and the ability to see yourself in somebody else's character, right? To, Precisely. To, that's why. It is so true. Well, that's what we have you there for. That's what we have me there for. That's what we have us there for. Totally. And there are still more of us. There are. There are. We're just gerrymandered out of existence in a lot of states, but what, there are more of us. That's just, you know, all, all evidence to the contrary. No, that's called gerrymandering, you freak. They're dividing us so that we can't be a majority because they don't like the fact that the majority doesn't approve of what they're doing. You know, like, uh, like I said, in Florida yesterday, they had this... Uh, 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 per permitless carry thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was reading you the polling numbers. 77% of Floridians do not want this. 93% of Floridians who are Democrats don't want it. 68% of Demo of independents don't want it. And 72% or seventy two of independents. And 68% uh, of Republicans don't want it. And yet it's happening. Mm -hmm. It's because of the gerrymander, baby. It's the way. It's just the way to divide people from getting exactly the kind of representation that they desire, that they vote for, that they want. It's going to be a long two years, sister. Telling you. 
I mean, I hope I make it through. <laughs> I just do. Same here. I'm, I'm trying. I love you, too. Mm. <laughs> what, what the hell was that? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I preempted his I love you, gorgeous girdles for everyone. I preempted. And all he was left with was the sound at the end of a phone call. Mm. <laughs> Down. All right, everybody, one segment to beer. One, one segment to beer. Please continue dialing the free speech, uh, you know, line, 877 378 Go ahead, keep doing it. Or text. One segment to beer. All right. Be back on the other side of this break. <laughs> is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Okay, this is fun. This is a lot of fun. This is uh, Ron DeSantis, who is a world heavyweight champion shapeshifter. Now, listen, I I I hate to, like, give anybody permission to lie because lying is really ugly and it's very dangerous. It's not good for a relationship. It's not good for children. It's just a, it's a terrible, terrible uh, habit that some people fall into. But there's a difference between liars who lie the white lie or who lie to cover up, you know, embarrassment or whatever it is, and a shapeshifter. That is the, uh, the, the, the ground of a sleaze bag. Somebody who could just shape, shift on demand. Okay, and that's what Ron death sentence is. Ron, Ron is not ready for prime time. You understand. I don't think he's going to run this particular cycle. Can you say cycle still in America? I don't know. Not in school. Not in Ron DeSantis's Florida public schools. You can't mention cycle. No, can't. It's some sort of a, a filth. <laughs> it's unclean. But uh, here he is uh, sitting down with. Now this is an odd choice. Okay, Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan is uh, for, for, for gun safety. He's, he's, he's an anti-gun guy. Anyway, Ron decided to go over there and sit down with this uh, smarmy uh, Piers uh, Morgan guy. And Piers Morgan asked him about his comment that Ukraine was just a, a, a territorial dispute. That's what was going on there, okay? Uh, it was a territorial dispute that Russia was having with bombs, apparently, on kindergartens and maternity hospitals and theaters that were housing children and civilian apartment buildings, you know, a territorial dispute. So Piers asked him about it. There is a move now to hold him accountable for war crimes, bombing maternity hospitals and genocidal activity in parts of Ukraine, wiping out whole cities, Mariupol and others. Would you support that? I mean, I think he is a war criminal. What? This ICC, we have not uh, done that in the United States because we're concerned about our soldiers or mm. people uh, being brought under it. So I don't know about that rubric, but I do think that, that he should be held accountable. What? Florida Governor Ron DeSantis <laughs> walked back his controversial comments on Ukraine as part of an hour-long interview with British broadcaster Piers Morgan. <laughs> he had previously downplayed Russia's war against Ukraine as merely a territorial dispute. Yeah. But we should point out his clarified stance, his new clarified stance, right. that Putin is a war criminal, but American troops should not deploy to Ukraine, isn't exactly that different to the position that President Biden staked out last year. You may remember I got criticized for calling Putin a war criminal. Yeah. Well, the truth of the matter is so it happened to Vuka. This warrants him. He is a war criminal. We said we'd not send U.S. troops to fight Russian troops in Ukraine, but we would provide robust military assistance and try to unify the Western world against Russia's aggression. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that something? So the people who were criticizing Joe Biden for saying that we would not deploy to Ukraine, we would not put American soldiers in Ukraine, we would not put boots on the ground in Ukraine, but under something called the Budapest Memorandum, okay, believe it or not, uh, America does owe uh, weaponry and training to Ukrainian soldiers. In exchange, Ukraine gave up all of its nuclear weapons, you see? Uh, and so we do have an obligation, and uh, Joe Biden is simply, uh, you know, uh, uh, abiding by it. 
and said we would not send American soldiers, and we haven't, and also said that uh, Vladimir Putin is a war criminal. He has demonstrated himself to have been uh, the, the guy who, uh, you know, ordered uh, maternity hospitals bombed, a guy who ordered, you know, h- hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian children to be taken, re-educated, and put up for adoption in Russia. I mean, this is a humanitarian, uh, you know, a uh, 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 sin. This is disgusting. It's trafficking. Human trafficking is what it is. So now Ron DeSantis, I, I guess, heard from the money delete in the Republican Party. I guess Karl Rove got a hold of him or some of the other war, uh, you know, neocons and said, uh, Ron, this is not a winning platform. You know, there is a memorandum. There's a, a memorandum of agreement that in exchange, you know, Ukraine gave up all its nuclear weapons that, uh, you know, friendly countries would have its back if they were attacked by Russia, who remains nuclear. But they still... They still gave up their nuclear weapons. That is uh, something you have to honor. That's something you have to abide. That's something you have to cheer. That's something you have to be pro. So now Ron just says, oh, no, no, I think he is a war criminal. I think that's what he is. Uh, I was mischaracterized by Tucker Carlson, which is who he told uh, in an answer to a, a query by Tucker Carlson, like what was his position on Ukraine? He said, oh, I think it's just a territorial dispute. Now he's saying... Tucker mischaracterized what I said, but you wrote it down, okay? If, if you were making the argument that Tucker Carlson is a liar, I'm down, I'm good. I might even believe you, even though you're a world heavyweight champion liar. You're a shapeshifter, but you wrote it down. You wrote it down. Now he's saying it was mischaracterized. So I guess the word mischaracterization is mischaracterized in Ron DeSantis's world. I don't know, but I'm going to show you another uh, two short clips just to drive this point home, okay? This is unbelievable. Piers asked uh, Ron DeSantis uh, whether or not he was ever stationed in the Navy. You know, he joined the Navy as a JAG officer, JAG off. Uh, No offense to JAG officers. I love A Few Good Men. It's like one of my favorite movies. But uh, yeah, he actually um, was asked about a previous comment he made about his duty as a JAG officer, which is a lawyer, a Navy lawyer, who was stationed at Gitmo, who was sought for, you know, sought after for legal advice, right? That's what an officer in Gitmo would be sought for, legal advice about what to do and what not to do with regard to torturing detainees. So Pierce asked him about that. I was a junior officer. I didn't have authority to authorize anything. Mm. There may have been a commander that would have done feeding if someone was going to die, but that was not something that I would have even had authority to do. Juanita, do you think this part of DeSantis' record is going to get more attention in the future? I mean, there's so much more that could come out about him, his time in the Navy, his time in Congress, his time before politics as a teacher. So (laughs) far, he's been cocooned in his safe right-wing space of Florida for so long. Absolutely, it's going to get more play, especially when people start running back that 2018 clip where he directly says to an interviewer, yeah, I was giving legal advice and yeah, I advise force feeding people in detention at Guantanamo Bay. The thing is, though, in 2018, he was trying to flex. He was trying to flex to the point that he was running his mouth a little too much. And now the receipts are there and that video clip is going to start making the rounds. Let's help it. Let's help that video clip make the rounds, shall we? This is 2018 Ron DeSantis being interviewed by Florida's uh, political, uh, you know, I I mean, he's a hero to Floridians, Jim DeFeedy, who is a fabulous, fabulous reporter, okay? And here he is in 2018 sitting down with Ron DeSantis asking him about his time at Gitmo. What was your experience there and what exactly did you do while you were there? Well, uh, also, you know, I'm a blue collar kid, which a lot of people, a lot of people running for this office are millionaires, have inherited an awful lot of money. Uh, I didn't get squat. I started off making $6 an hour. I was able through baseball to, uh, to play at Yale and go to Harvard Law School. Then I decided to commission uh, yeah. as a JAG officer in the U.S. Navy. I volunteered to serve in Gitmo. I was uh, sent down there on temporary assignments working for the Joint Task Force Guantanamo, which was in charge of dealing with these terrorists that were there. So um, are you interviewing terrorists? Were you, were, you, were you a legal advisor? I was a legal advisor. For those um, that were doing... The things that would happen is the thing you notice the day you get down there is 
for these detainees, the jihad was still ongoing, right. and they would wage jihad any way they can. Now, they're in a facility, so it's limited, but some of the things they would do, they would do hunger strikes, and you actually had three detainees that committed suicide with hunger strikes. So everything at that time was legal in nature one way or another. So the commander wants to know, well, how do I combat this? So one of the jobs of the legal advisor would be like, hey, you actually can force feed. Here's what you can do. Here's kind of the rules of that. You also had a lot of detainees claiming abuse because this was in the wake of Abu Ghraib. And that was used offensively against our guards. So our guards would have feces thrown at them, all this other stuff. And yet they would be charged with detainee abuse. So we had to evaluate all that. So what I learned from that and I took to Iraq when I was working with SEAL Team 1 is they are using things like detainee abuse offensively against us. It was a tactic, technique, and procedure. So he authorized the force feeding of detainees at Gitmo. He actually says, you know, back then nothing was legal, nothing was illegal. So we did whatever we wanted to do. And they came to me and they said, you know, how do I combat this? They won't eat. And he said, hey, you can actually force feed. Here's what you can do. Three detainees died on the same day. He's saying they all committed suicide. Because why? It was a full moon and they were unhappy? No, no. There's no evidence that three men committed suicide at the same time. There was no Kool-Aid there. The Kool-Aid's in Waco. This is just a, a, a beginning of a story. Trust me. Have a good weekend. Clear for takeoff. Randy Rhodes. Randy